All right, Dr. Khanda, there's one other way to know about megacolon. I see. Is oh. this one also toxic? You'll see a new thing. I came up with a new idea. I see. Megacolon. Here I'm not writing toxic. Look at this. Tricky. Megacolon, you can divide for the USML exam. Think about these three things. It will help you. So if you're thinking about megacolon, think about the three conditions. First is acute megacolon. Megacolon. Second thing about chronic megacolon. You guys will know what exactly I'm talking about here. And third is toxic megacolon. This way we can memorize most of the stuff and we won't be confused. Now what is acute megacolon? This is Oligby. Oh, how to say that? Ogilvy. Ogilvy. Sorry. Ogilvy syndrome. We say that Ogilvy. You know, a lot of guys confused with this. Ogilvy. Sorry. Ogilvy. Ogilvy syndrome. What is Ogilvy syndrome? This is acute megacolon. So those patients who are who are having a, who are ill, elderly patient, severe illness. So this is something acute megacolon. This is pseudo. Pseudo means false. Pseudo obstruction. You do severe illness. Severe illness. So pay attention to the elderly patient who are like severely sick. They have a pseudo obstruction. This is called acute megacolon. We call it Ogilvy syndrome. Now the next thing is what we need to know extra from this. We will go for the treatment plan first. Now the treatment will be Always, always do bowel decompression. I mean, you are, you are giving the NG tube uh, and then decompression, NG decompression. Now, the main thing is so here, pseudo obstruction, there is a pseudo obstruction. So, what we have to do, we have, we have a choice. We can go with the rectal tube. Decompression. You can also go colonoscopic, scopic, decompression, and you can also give neostigmine. You have a, a drug you guys can, we can also give neostigmine. Now, this is what about Ogilvy syndrome that is acute megacolon. Same thing, megacolon happens in acute setting. Think about a patient who has severe. Uh, due to severe illness, this is pseudo obstruction. Now, let's talk about chronic megacolon. So, chronic megacolon means we're talking about pediatrics. Talking about pediatrics here. What condition comes in your head about chronic megacolon? It's Hirschsprung disease or Hirschsprung disease, whatever, how, whatever you like to pronounce. Hirschsprung disease what's happening in there the pathophysiology is that there is a congenital abnormality or a congenital aganglionic cell like there's an absence of ganglion into the distal colon so all right absence of ganglionic cells in the distal colon. distal colon about that just think about how to diagnose uh, Hirschsprung disease always always the best choice is 
biopsy gold standard is gold standard rectal biopsy biopsy how to treat the treatment is surgical resection we are removing the part the treatment is surgical 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 resection now we know that the toxic megacolon we already know just think about two conditions the main causes one is ibd other is c diff secondary to these two and this is here we have non obstructive colitis that's what they are comparing with this this is a pseudo obstruction that is non obstructive colitis toxic colitis secondary to these two just for the exam purpose think about ibd and c diff and treat the main cause with ibd as we already mentioned in the previous lecture ibd uh, ibd treatment is corticosteroid and the c diff is antibiotics and what do we do if these two condition are, conditions are not there and then we are treating it uh, other otherwise will be same bowel um, decompression and then we have bowel uh, decompression iv fluids bowel rest bowel decompression iv fluids and at the end we do surgery what kind of surgery is colectomy colectomy i hope everything is coming in the video colectomy so this is the one of the best way to know about megacolon i will just repeat again acute megacolon or gilvy syndrome there is a pseudo obstruction due to severe illness if the patient is in icu or severely sick patient all of sudden that's acute setting patient start having a abdominal distension same like megacolon same picture so how uh, to diagnose abdominal x ray pick abdominal x ray to show all this in the megacolon chronic megacolon with the case will be peds heat sprung disease abscess of ganglionic cells in distal colon go and do the if you want to diagnose it rectal rectal biopsy otherwise treatment is surgical resection and we know toxic megacolon it's actually they call it non obstructive toxic colitis secondary to complication of ibd and cd and treat the cause do you like this way dr honda yeah i think uh, this is well, a nice, definitely a nice way to look at it um just to clarify what exactly a pseudo obstruction is uh so that clinically would be defined as an acute dilation of the large intestine in the absence of mechanical obstruction yeah um so that way we clarify that and uh what you said was brilliant about uh, anticholinergics like neostigmine uh you had recent surgery sepsis narcotics malignancy all of these could be causes of ogilvy um and in terms of diagnosis uh, or differential let's say the differential from the toxic megacolon would be that in the toxic you described that we had a severe colitis we had systemic toxicity like tachycardia fever altered mental status so that's different from toxic if it was a large bowel obstruction the difference would be there would be a mechanical obstruction present yeah so i think that this way really uh helps to keep the mind um yeah straight in terms of which direction to go yes very good and abdominal x-ray again becomes the mainstay uh for most of them chronic megacolon or hirschsprung uh you said gold standard is that uh suction biopsy rectal suction biopsy and the main goal is to just uh, recognize the disease right so you can uh, the, the way dr han has described large uh, bowel obstruction versus toxic megacolon you guys can be confused but think about what it is secondary to when this is if they are talking about large bowel it versus small bowel just go with the location and make sure surgic uh, small bowel obstruction is something uh, adhesion in the past or abdominal surgery happened in the past otherwise large bowel will be secondary to some other uh, like neoplastic definitely the mo most common definitely and then some other good things to know for her sprung is 
um, after, in case for some reason they're not talking about rectal suction biopsy, another good initial test we can do is a contrast enema. Yes. Um, you know, that you... uh, will help you for distinguish between hirsuprong versus meconium yes. Right. That's something extra we will talk about in the next lecture. Thanks so much, Dr. Handa, by giving us more details.